Hello, my Linux Things family and friends. Welcome back to the channel, guys. So today is going to be our first mini little uh, series of me bringing back something I really enjoyed doing um, probably over a year ago. So I did this um, part on my channel where I did uh, readings from uh, books or well, one book, I was reading the story of Miss Cicely Tyson, and it might have been around Black History Month as well when I did that. There is a playlist here um, on my channel with all of those readings, but I read the whole book, but not in its entirety, but I read like almost all of the book to you guys, and a lot of you guys enjoyed it. And here we are again during Black History Month, and I kind of just wanted to share um, some someone else with you guys. I wanted to share another book. I won't be reading it in its entirety, just some things that um, kind of shout out at me or spoke to me and something I kind of want to probably want you to know about the person that I chose to read about and just kind of wanted to share some things with you guys. Um, so this is story time with Lynn. And for those of you who were um, present when I did it the first time reading about our girl Cicely Tyson, y'all know I like to light a candle. So you could take this time to, um, you know, if you just, you know, doing dishes or you want to clean the house and you just kind of want to listen to something in the background um, type of time, you don't have to, you know, just sit and, you know, watch. You can just kind of hear me in the background or if you want to watch, please feel free. Um, but I suggest you get nice and comfy. It's just for, I'm, I'm going to say a few minutes. Um, but yeah, you can go ahead and get nice and comfy. Go ahead and listen. Uh, for those of you who were around, like I said, the first time I did this, it was much longer. So I always lit a candle when I would do this. So I think I'm going to go ahead and light my peppermint sugar uh, sugar cookie candle while I do this reading. Again, um, it's not going to be as long as the previous time I did it, but it's just it was just really cool. Kind of set the ambiance, you know, get comfy, have a seat, get a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Um, kick your feet up. Or like I say, if you're, you know, maybe busy doing something, you could just let me play in the background. So we chose Miss Viola Davis, as you saw in my thumbnail. Yes, y'all. Finding Me is the name of her book. And y'all, this, her story is, oh my gosh, just, it's very interesting. Um, and one thing that I found uh, quite interesting about her was I read Cicely Tyson's book and she actually did a foreword in Cicely Tyson's book. So when I got her, my daughter has been blessing me for my birthday, Mother's Day, Christmas, whichever one it is, with like another book of another wonderful um, woman of color. Uh, she got me Cicely and then after that, I think I got this one. And I thought that was really cool because I love what she had to say in the foreword of Cicely's book. So it was really, really nice to get her book. Um, but when I read her book, some things shocked me. So I don't know how many of you out there may have wrote, uh, read her book, but it's like, it's very um, detailed, very blunt. So some things I may not be saying, but I, like I said, I just kind of want to give you guys a gist. So while I'm saying all of that, I kind of want to introduce, you know, her, her name is Viola Davis. She was born, which I did not remember this, born on my bestie's birthday. So I have a best friend who we have been best friends for over 30 years and her birthday is August 11th. And I was like, wow. So, um, Miss Viola's birthday is August 11th. She was born in 1965 guys in St. Matthews, Carolina. Um, she is the second youngest child of six children in her family. Um, they soon moved, though. They weren't still in Virginia. I believe they said she was born in her grandmother's cabin. Um, but they soon moved with her mom, her dad, and a couple of her siblings. I do believe some of the children got left with the grandma for a little while. But they um, wind up moving to Central Falls, Rhode Island, guys. And I just thought, I, I, know, I don't know. When I first heard that, I just found that so funny that, you know, we have a family of color moving to uh, Rhode Island. I just can't even picture that. It just seems so weird to me, but, um, her father was a factory worker and her mom was a maid. And so I believe they went there probably for work, you know, father was trying to find work. So that's just a little background on her, where she's born and things like that. So now I'm going to read the part of the book that, you know, kind of to introduce a little bit of her and like her younger life. So here we go, guys. It says, one day after a snowstorm, the snow was piled so high in the streets, anyone could hide behind the giant mounds that seemed to be everywhere. My shoes had huge holes on the bottoms, which meant 
I couldn't run fast in them because they would make my feet hurt worse than they already did. Because of this, during my daily runs for my life, I would usually take my shoes off, hold them in my hands, and run bare feet. But with mountains of snow everywhere, I couldn't do that this time. As a result, they caught me. And when they did, they held my arms back and took me to their leader, the Cape Verdean boy. I didn't mention names because, well, their race is more important in telling this story. She's ugly. Uh, and they call her the black um, N-word. He says, she says, my heart was beating so fast. I kept silently praying for someone to come and save me. And the other voices sounded around me. What should we do with her? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're ugly, they kept saying over and over. I don't know why you're saying that to me. I pleaded to the ringleader, the Portuguese boy. You're black too. And when I said that, everybody froze and fell deathly silent. For a split second, we were all in a movie. As all now silent white boys looked at the Portuguese boy, eager to respond to anything he said, you're black too, I yelled. And I yelled it again, calling him by his name. The gang remained silent, really, really quiet. He looked at me and looked from one white boy to another, frightened and struggling to find a way to hide the truth of what I had just said. The kind of truth that's rooted in a self-hate that we would rather take to our graves. Finally, he screamed in intense anger. Don't you ever call me black. I'm not black. I'm Portuguese, he says. And he punched me in the arm really hard. He looked down, ashamed at being called out as if I exposed the ugliest, most painful truth. Get out of my face. Then they threw me in the snow and kicked snow all over me. My arm had stiffened. It was, I was in pain. I walked home completely humiliated. The next day, I did not want to go to school. My mom was doing the laundry in one of those old washing machines where you had to pull the clothes through the wringer. What's wrong with you? She asked. Mama. Those boys want to kill me. They chase me every day at the school. After keeping it from her for months, I finally told her about my ongoing daily trauma. Viola, the Southern pronunciation of my name. Don't you run from them boys anymore. You hear me? Soon as that bell rang, you walk. And walk is in capital letters, y'all. You walk home. Because see, every day she got out of school, she would get prepared to run home guys because they would chase her home every day and so her mother told her to walk they mess with you you jug them she says jug is a country word for stab but if you know what a crochet needle looks like my mom was actually being ethical they are not sharp at all she gave me a crochet needle and told me to keep it in my pocket it was her shiny blue one don't come back here crying about those boys or I'll whoop you myself. She meant that, y'all. This was a woman with six kids. She didn't have time to go to school every day and fight our battles. She absolutely needed me to know how to defend myself, even if she had to threaten me into doing it. So the next day it took every bone, muscle, and cell in my body to walk after that bell had rang. I could hear the voices of the boys right behind me. I could feel their rage, the hate. But I walked extra slow. So slow, I barely moved. My fingers were wrapped around that shiny blue crochet needle in my pocket. The voices got louder and closer. Finally, I felt one grab my arm violently. And an anger, a finality, an exhaustion came over me. I whispered. If you don't get your hands off of me, I'll jug you. He looked at me terrified, searching my face to see if I meant it, and I did. He let me go, and the rest of them walked away laughing. The ritual of chasing the nappy-headed girl home has suddenly lost its luster. Years later, a conversation I had on the set of Suicide Squad with Will Smith 
was an aha moment. Will asked me, Viola, who are you? What does that mean? I know who I am, I replied with the indignant confidence. He asked again, no, but who are you? What does that mean? I asked him again. Look, I'm always going to be that 15-year-old boy whose girlfriend broke up with him. That's always going to be me. So, who are you? Who am I? I was quiet, and once again, that indestructible memory hit me. Then I just blurted it out. I'm the little girl who will run after school every day in the third grade because these boys hated me because I was not pretty, because I was black. Will stared at me as if seeing me for the first time and just kind of nodded. My throat got tight and I could feel the tears welling up. Memories are immortal. They're deathless and precise. They have the power of giving you joy and perspective in hard times, or they can strangle you, define you in a way that's based more in other people's tucked up perceptions than truth. There I was, a working actress with steady gigs, Broadway credits and multiple industry awards and a reputation of bringing professionalism and excellence to any project. Heck, Oprah knew who I was. Yet, sitting there conversing with Will Smith, I was still that little terrified third grade black girl. And although I was many years away and many miles away from Central Falls, Rhode Island, I had never stopped running. So, when I read that, um, there is a little bit more in the beginning of, of the story where she is talking about these little boys in that area chasing her down and um, just terrorizing her, y'all, um, basically because of the color of her skin. And, you know, it's really, really crazy that we have to live in a world where just because your skin color is different, you're probably looked down upon. You're probably not appreciated. You're, it's just a lot of things that we have um, seen and heard and not just in history, but even into this day, time, day and time, we still run into things like that. So um, this is just a snippet of her younger self. And I just wanted to kind of give that little backstory a little bit on what she went through. Oh my gosh, y'all. It's so much more. I'm sure I'm not going to be able to get through the whole book, but like I said, I'm just going to try to share with you guys bits and pieces um, of things that I can share with you because her, her book is quite raw. So if you're interested in hearing her whole story, please do not hesitate to go and pick up that book, look on Amazon, maybe see if they still have it. It's a very, very good read. You literally are just flipping, flipping, flipping. You, you don't want to put the book down. That's how I was. I read it so fast. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoy our first <laughs> story time with Lynn, with Lynn again. Um, just kind of giving, like I said, what, um, sh you know, stuck out to me in her book and I will continue to share. I don't have a day per se picked out when I will, but when I, you know, get the chance to, I will share another part of the book. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, I am Lynn with Lynn and Things, and this is just another thing that I do here on my channel. Thank you guys so very much. Catch you in the next one.